Hey everyone, it's Peter from Theme Park Crazy. For quite some time, I've wanted to do a video talking about the Dan Snyder era of Six Flags. Now for those of you who don't know, Dan Snyder is the former owner of the Washington Commanders football team, formerly known as the Washington Redskins, and served as chairman of Six Flags. But when you really center a video on a certain person, like a specific person, that opens the door to a lot of legal issues, and that also opens the door to possibly violating YouTube's content policies. So for that reason, this video is mainly going to be factual. So I'm going to discuss things that actually happened, business decisions that actually happened, all in the span of five years, 2005 through 2009. And the way I see things, the current management of Six Flags, which is very different from the Six Flags back then, is more likely than not going to want to move past these business decisions. The way I see things, these are things that Six Flags is going to naturally want you to forget, be they bizarre or just off-putting. So with that said, here are 10 things that Six Flags, more likely than not, wants you to forget. Now these things, for the most part, are going to be in chronological order. And once again, this is more of a video that analyzes history, so not so much about Dan Snyder, but the decisions that were made under his tenure as chairman. So first things first, we're going to talk about the ousting of former CEO Kieran Burke. Now Burke was the chief executive officer of Six Flags from 1989 to 2005. And of course, Burke was one of the most important people in Six Flags' history. He was largely responsible for bringing all of these giant roller coasters to the parks, like year after year, roller coaster after roller coaster, and these were big coasters too. You'd have B&M Hypers, you'd have experimental coasters like X2, and of course giant record breakers like Superman the Escape, and towards the end of his tenure, King Ka. So very influential figure in Six Flags' history, and the reason why Six Flags parks are most well known for their giant roller coasters. However, his strategy of constantly adding giant coasters to the parks started to backfire in the mid-2000s. The company was drowning in debt, and their share prices had absolutely plummeted. So naturally, their shareholders were not happy whatsoever with the rule of Kieran Burke. Dan Snyder, who operated this big public equity firm Red Zone, decided that he was fed up with the bad decisions that Six Flags was making, and he was going to lead a shareholder's revolt against Kieran Burke. So what he did was he wrote a strongly worded letter to Six Flags shareholders, and I will link that in the description, calling on them to oust Kieran Burke, make himself the new chairman, and allow him to pick someone else to be CEO. This letter said, and I quote, A dollar invested in Six Flags in May 1999 was worth less than 14 cents on August 17th, 2005, the day we announced our intentions. Stockholders would have done better by hiding their money under a mattress. Now, I find this humorous because when I think of money in a mattress or under a mattress, I think of that episode of Spongebob where Spongebob and Squidward get Mr. Krabs a new mattress and they throw out his old mattress only to realize that he kept all of his money in that mattress. And believe it or not, that episode premiered only a few months before this letter was written. So was Dan Snyder inspired by Spongebob to try to take over Six Flags' board? I'll leave that up to you to decide. So this letter worked because, realistically, people were not happy with Kieran Burke basically drowning Six Flags in debt. And so the shareholders ousted Kieran Burke and installed Dan Snyder as chairman, and Mark Shapiro of ESPN as the company's new CEO. Now keep in mind, you have to be in the absolute pits 
to have your company's CEO ousted by shareholders. In the case of Kieran Burke, there was nothing he could do to sugarcoat the financial trouble that Six Flags was in. So after Shapiro became CEO and Dan Snyder took over as chairman, the two decided that they were going to focus less on the teenage thrill-seeking market and market the parks more towards families and young children. And one of the ways they did this was announced that basically we're not going to make any new major roller coaster investments. And sure, there were some projects that were still in the pipeline and still ended up getting made. The next year in 2006, Six Flags Over Georgia got Goliath, Six Flags Magic Mountain got Tatsu, and Six Flags Great Adventure got El Toro because those were all already in the pipeline in 2005. And speaking of El Toro, the second thing Six Flags is going to want you to forget is that El Toro was almost completely canceled. Yes, one of the biggest coasters in the Six Flags chain very well could have never been brought into existence. According to GreatAdventureHistory.com, by the time that Dan Snyder and Mark Shapiro took control of the company, El Toro was already pretty far into development and they already started constructing it. If Snyder and Shapiro had taken over Six Flags just a bit earlier, it's very well possible they could have said, scrap the whole thing, cancel it, we're not building it because it's too expensive. Because here's a fun fact. El Toro actually cost more to build than King Ka did. King Ka cost $25 million and El Toro cost $28 million. And to put it simply, roller coasters are not Batgirl movies. You can't just cancel them during construction just to get a tax write-off. And if there are any cases of that happening with roller coasters, feel free to comment down below. So after taking over the company and deciding to spare the 2006 coasters, the new management team at Six Flags started making some changes. The first of these changes is the third thing that Six Flags wants you to forget. No re-entry at any time for any reason. Now sure, a lot of parks have a no re-entry policy during the Halloween season, during the times when they're open late at night, and this is to make sure that people don't leave the park, go to their car, tailgate with alcohol, then come back in drunk and end up starting fights and damaging property. No, this no re-entry policy was at any moment in the park's operating schedule. Even if it was during the day and it wasn't a busy day and you decided, oh, um, my grandmother ha is having a heart attack. Let's say that you decide to leave the park, drive to the hospital, and then your grandmother calls you and says, oh, never mind, it was just gas. And then you try to get back in the park. They're not going to let you back in without paying full price. No hand stamps, no nothing. You got to pay full price to get back in the park. And if you thought this was bad, what was arguably even worse is what they did with the parking at Six Flags New England. Now, Six Flags New England is located in Ottawa, Massachusetts. And if you've been to the area, you may have noticed over the years that there are other lots that you could park at and walk to the park on the sidewalk. And it's really not that far of a walk. You're going to be walking all day anyway, so why not just walk a little bit more to save a good amount of money? And I don't know how much these parking lots cost nowadays or how many of them are left nowadays, but at the time period that Dan Snyder took over... Parking costs were said to have been inflated to up to $30 for the day. That is double the amount that they charged before Snyder came on. And so naturally, people are going to be like, wait a minute, that's way too much money. I'm just going to go a little bit up the street and only pay $10, so I'm saving two-thirds of the price on your expensive parking. Now these less expensive lots were operated by local businesses like South Agawam Storage. So needless to say, it generated a lot of controversy when the higher-ups at Six Flags decided to lobby the local government to ban these third-party lots. And their reasoning was that it was unsafe for guests to park somewhere else and walk to the park. Bear in mind that there is a big, fat sidewalk that leads right to the park, 
By this logic, why not ban all sidewalks and crosswalks? Strangely enough, this argument managed to convince the local government that they should ban these lots, and so the small business owners that operated them were not happy about this at all. What was even more irritating to the small business owners at the time is that town mayor Richard Cohen was heavily in favor of the ban, saying that Six Flags just wanted to keep everyone safe. However, small business owner Michael Palazzi, who owned South Agawam Storage, went to city council and informed them that Snyder had made the same safety argument when he tried to ban outside parking lots for FedEx Field, which is where the, at the time, Washington Redskins played. That ban was tossed out back in 2004 when a Maryland judge ruled that Snyder basically invented the safety excuse to force people to pay more money. Now here Snyder was making the same argument to Agawam, and once this was pointed out to city council, they quickly repealed the ban. Palazzi, on the other hand, wasn't just going to let bygones be bygones. So when Richard Cohen was up for re-election as mayor, Palazzi managed the political campaign of substitute teacher Susan Dawson and made the whole Six Flags parking dispute the main issue of the campaign. And in the end, Dawson beat Cohen, and he was a four-term incumbent. That's not an easy thing to do. So clearly, the townspeople were not having this parking ban at all. Now with that out of the way, this next topic is a bit more serious. And it concerns an old ad campaign that Six Flags used during the tenure of Dan Snyder. Now, you may know about Mr. Six. He's the dancing old guy that everybody knows is the mascot of Six Flags. Even the people who don't visit Six Flags parks know who Mr. Six is. He's super iconic, super memorable. And you think of Six Flags, chances are you're going to think of this guy. That said, the higher-ups at Six Flags decided to essentially kill off Mr. Six. They argued that this marketing campaign appealed more to teenagers than families, with Dan Snyder supposedly labeling Mr. Six as quote-unquote pointless. But of course, once they got rid of Mr. Six, they needed a new marketing campaign. So what they did was very controversial. One flag! Six flags! One flags! One fun! Many people criticized this ad campaign, saying that it used Asian stereotypes to market the Six Flags brand. But what was even worse than the public perception was the behind the scenes of how these commercials were made. According to an article on Defector.com, actors who auditioned for the role of the loud man we're told to, quote, emulate Charlie Chan. Charlie Chan is a fictional Honolulu police detective character from the 1940s who is supposed to be Asian, but is played by a white man. This, in turn, led the Chicago chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League to publicly dispute this ad campaign. Eventually, Six Flags did get rid of the man in the commercials and replaced him with Mr. Six. <gasps> Two flags. Six flags. More flags. More fun. Yes, Mr. Six, the guy who they got rid of in the first place, they decided to bring him back because they realized, wait a minute, people like Mr. Six. And by the way, did you know that Pandemonium at Six Flags New England was originally named Mr. Six's Pandemonium? And the only reason it's called Pandemonium nowadays is because of the decision to kill off Mr. Six? That aside, I'm not going to get too in-depth with this next subject because, for one thing, I don't want this video to get super dark, and I don't want to get demonetized either, and this is a potentially very, very serious subject. But also, I think that this fact alone speaks for itself. So I hope you're sitting down for this one. Six Flags higher-ups 
put Harvey Weinstein on the board. And yes, this is the Harvey Weinstein that you're thinking of. Apparently, this was done because Dan Snyder wanted to get more into the entertainment business. But I'm not going to go any further on this, because I really do think that this fact alone speaks for itself. Now moving on, take a look at the satellite image. Now what you're looking at here is a slingshot ride called the Blitz. Now in this context, the term Blitz is referring to a defensive tactic in football that I don't fully understand because I'm terrible at sports terminology, but what I can tell you is that this ride was predominantly themed to the Washington Redskins. You can see the logo right there in the middle of this mock field. Now at first you might be thinking, okay, Six Flags America is in Maryland, so what if they themed a ride to the Washington Redskins? It's in the same general area as Washington, D.C., but the only problem is that this is not Six Flags America. This is Six Flags New England. You'd think that they would put a Patriots ride here, but no, it's a Washington Redskins ride. So the way I see it, and admittedly I cannot confirm this because I know next to nothing about this ride's history, the only reason why this ride is themed to the Washington Redskins despite being in Massachusetts is because Dan Snyder owned the Redskins at the time. This would be like if Kenny would decide to open a Philadelphia Eagles ride. It just doesn't make sense. Now we've come to number eight, and this one is probably even more bizarre than the Washington Redskins ride. And I want to thank Podcast The Ride for introducing me to this subject, by the way. Now, you may remember Club Libulu from the 2000s. It's somewhere where you could take your kids to get a makeover, get their nails done, have birthday parties there. So in 2009, around the time when Club Libulu went out of business, by the way, Six Flags higher-ups decided, you know what? We need to get into a business like this. We need to get into the makeover business. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Six Flags Roller Coaster Cuts. Getting a haircut is way more fun at Six Flags Roller Coaster Cuts at King of Prussia Mall. It's where you'll find great haircuts with all the thrills of Six Flags. This place is awesome. You'll wish this place had been around when you were a kid or when you still had hair. One back. Visit us at rollercoastercuts.com or come on in to Roller Coaster Cuts at King of Prussia Mall. We're open every day. More flags, more fun. You could not make this up. A Six Flags themed hair salon chain. And it was more than just hair. You could get your hair dyed. You could get your nails done. You could make your own lip gloss and your own hand lotion with sparkles in it. Honestly, I don't know why you would want to put glitter on your hands. It gets everywhere. But apparently, there were character meet and greets too, with Mr. Six as well as Henry the Octopus and Wags the Dog from The Wiggles. Now, of course, this was around the time when Six Flags was introducing Wiggles World to their parks, but Defunct Land pretty much covered the whole Wiggles thing already. Another thing that Six Flags Roller Coaster Cuts offered was birthday parties. There would be games, a fashion show, and a sad-looking clown that they probably pulled off the street. Oh, and they also offered candy and really cheap-looking toys. Pretty much the same kind you get at a Six Flags gift shop. Now this chain would only end up having two locations. One in West Hartford, Connecticut, and another in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. And here you could get a number of different haircuts. There was the Glammy, the Zoink, the Big Kapow, and the Blamma Jamma, all of which sound like things you would hear on TikTok. I mean, if they threw in something like the Big Yacht, it would fit right in. Each one costs $50, by the way. But don't worry, because you could also watch footage of Six Flags roller coasters while you're getting your hair cut. Also, this hair salon was not open to the general public. There was actually a sign that said anyone over 42 inches had to be accompanied by a child. So Uncle Fred couldn't just walk in and be like, Hey, I want a zoink! As you can imagine, this concept was a failure, and it only lasted for about a year. But if you thought the strange marketing tactics for that year were over, think again. In 2009, Six Flags partnered with a betting company called Anatomic Global and decided to buy a bunch of mattresses for its Great Escape Resort in New York. 
But they didn't just buy new mattresses for their hotel. They marketed these mattresses as the official mattress of Six Flags. They even sold them for $1,300 for a queen size. Now, if you remember, the whole reason that Dan Snyder got the job that he did was because he wrote a letter saying that shareholders would be better off putting their money under a mattress. And suddenly, here he was, selling mattresses. And to top it all off, Six Flags filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy around the same time as this mattress announcement. Now, at the time, Dan Snyder was still chairman of the board. But his time was about to come to an end, but not before one more thing that's worth talking about. Introducing Six Flags TV. These are video segments that would play throughout the park on TV screens. Now the concept alone isn't that unusual. You see TV screens in line all the time playing music videos and trivia and old Looney Tunes shorts, etc. But with Six Flags TV, these videos were extremely awkward. So let's take a look at a few of them. And once again, kudos to Podcast The Ride for introducing me to these. Whoa, Welcome back to Six Flags TV. I'm your host, Kid Hoover, and I gotta tell you, I'm on a mission, because something's up with those Looney Tune characters. I mean, when you bump into them around this time every day, they're kind of mellow, blissed what? out, and I have Wait, a feeling... Wait, hold on. Mellow and blissed out? Blissed out on what? Ah, uh -huh, I've been looking for them everywhere. Okay, okay, that's not actually what it is, even though this park is in California. These are actually water massage beds, specifically this kind. And honestly, these don't look that comfortable. I mean, there's nothing to rest your head on, and I don't think you can really feel the water jets from behind that thick plastic. And I mean, the people in these suits, they cannot be comfortable right now. I've worn a suit like that, and every single second of it is sweaty hell. And like Podcast the Ride pointed this out, but I just love how there's a free aqua bed right there, and yet Kit Hoover is choosing to kick Daffy off of his because... I guess Daffy always has to get the short end of the stick. All right, well, that's pretty much it for that. Here's another one. I want to see if Coaster fans have gotten any braver. And like, I don't want to brag over here, but if it's up to this kid, bring it on. Yahoo! Hey, everybody, this is Steven. He's 15 years old from California. I just met him. Look at this face. Is this the face of a roller coaster junkie? Why is she squeezing his face? He does not look comfortable whatsoever. He said he's ridden Goliath up to 12 times. What makes this such a good roller coaster? Um, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't squeeze my face like that. Yeah, 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 they ride Goliath, whoop de doo Now here's one featuring a couple of coaster enthusiasts. I mean, there's nothing too off about this video, but I just love the idea that they're just keeping people waiting in line and keeping this train in the station so that they could film this segment. And I don't know how many takes they had to do, but... If this was a real line, there's no way these people would be happy. Alright, so there's more of these videos. I'll put a link in the description of the channel that posted them. But shortly after these videos, and around the beginning of 2010, Dan Snyder was ousted as chairman as part of a settlement with a Delaware bankruptcy court. And thus ended the time that Dan Snyder spent as Six Flags chairman. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention about Six Flags roller coaster cuts. The West Hartford location later became Kennedy's All-American Barber Club, but is nowadays, get this, a Tempur-Pedic mattress store. Truly everything starts and ends with mattresses. I'm not going to say anything about the man himself, but I can pretty much agree with a lot of people that some of the decisions he made were very strange. And I'm surprised that a lot of these stories have not been told, because these stories are almost too strange to believe. But like they say, reality is sometimes stranger than fiction. So all in all, I'm going to leave it up to you to decide what you think about Dan Snyder's time as chairman of Six Flags. Feel free to comment down below. This is Peter from Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time. Hey, did you hear it's calamari night next door? Dun, 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 dun